Good news, the iPad that you use for browsing Netflix and watching YouTube and pretending that you can make it your you know, full laptop replacement, but then ultimately ending up going back for your MacBook anyway, has just got even more powerful. This is the brand new M5 iPad Pro. Apple sent me this 13 inch version. Obviously it still comes with the smaller 11 as well. A lot of people do want their iPads for some proper work use. And the whole point of this refreshed Pro with the M5 well, the big upgrade really is AI and also graphics. We'll put that to the test in a second. But first, I'm gonna do a very bad job of taking the plastic up. That may have been the most unsatisfying unboxing I've ever done. But here we are with the silver 13 inch. Ooh, look at that. Nano texture. So this is an optional extra to get the nano texture screen, which sort of diffuses the light if I can shine it against my little studio light there. You can see how it's really reducing that glare. Not everyone loves nano texture because it can reduce the contrast a little bit, especially when looking off angle. But if you're gonna use this out and about a lot, I use it on my MacBook Pro and I love it. We do also have a USB-C charging cable in the box. And speaking of the charging, this is the first iPad ever to support fast charging. I think you can get 50% of the battery in 30 minutes. So faster charging with a USB-C port, otherwise it's the same. Apple also very kindly sent their Magic Keyboard. I love the Magic Keyboard. The problem is it's really bloody expensive. In fact, everything to do with iPads is really bloody expensive unless you go for the base model. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I will be making a big iPad buying guide to figure out which one actually makes sense to buy because you can end up spending an awful lot of money once you Increase the storage, buy the accessories. If I chuck that away, pardon me. You can simply pop your iPad on like so. And to complete the setup, I've got the Apple Pencil Pro. This also does work with the iPad Air, despite the Pro name, but this is the ultimate iPad setup with the Magic Keyboard, the Pencil Pro, get off, which just pops on like so. 13-inch iPad Pro with M5, now a texture screen. It's all very nice, but from the outside, there's nothing new here. So what has changed? So Apple have refreshed the iPad Pro, the base MacBook Pro, and the Vision Pro headset with the M5 chip. Meaning for now, until they update the rest of the iPad lineup, there's actually a two generational jump between the iPad Air, which is still using the M3, and the Pro, which now has the M5 chip. But even versus last year's iPad Pro with the M4, Apple say this new guy is three and a half times faster in terms of AI performance, or specifically GPU accelerated AI performance, because each GPU core, each graphics core has its own neural accelerator. So for things like running local LLMs, this is a big deal. Also, the memory bandwidth is faster. They've bumped the RAM up from eight to 12 gigabytes on the 256 and the 512 gig models, plus the storage is twice as fast, which is particularly useful if you're transferring files to or from an external drive. But if none of that means anything to you and you're not running local large language models on device for image generation or whatever it is you're doing, then you probably don't need a Pro. Most of us don't need a Pro. But Apple is still really keen on pushing this as a proper little workstation for professionals and uh, AI developers, students. Well, maybe more for STEM students, probably a little bit overkill if you're studying English literature. It is so insanely powerful, but that is just one part of this. The keyboard with the Magic Keyboard is just as nice as my MacBook Pro. I really enjoy using this and I could happily write a literature essay, although happily is maybe a strong word. And this screen is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it's OLED 120 Hertz, up to 1600 nits of brightness versus LCD uh, 60 Hertz about 500 inches of brightness on the iPad Air. So for me, the main reason to get a Pro over an Air or any other iPad is the display. The Pros do also give you this nano texture option. There's a two terabyte storage option on the Pros. If you have extremely deep pockets, the Pros get better cameras, faster charging, much better speakers. You get four of them rather than two on the Air. We get Wi-Fi 7 and also faster 5G now. If you spec this with a cellular option because it's using Apple's new C1X modem, you get faster and more efficient 5G. You also get Face ID on the Pro models. And if you do buy the Magic Keyboard, which you probably should, even if it is eye-wateringly expensive, it is quite a bit nicer and more premium. 
The thing is though, while most of the time I use my iPad Pro with a Magic Keyboard, I think most people probably would, especially the bigger 13 inch version, sometimes I forget just how ridiculously thin this thing is. This is just 5.1 millimeters thick for the 13 inch, it's 5.3 for the 11. And for context, the iPhone Air that everyone's hyped about is 5.6 millimeters and we're still getting the same all day battery life. It hasn't improved with this new M5 model, but it's also not got any worse. And yes, you get the M5 chip. So bottom line, the best iPad has just got a little bit faster. So the question really is, how much faster is this new M5 iPad Pro? Well, let's bring in last year's M4 iPad Pro. I have the 11 inch here versus the new 13 with nano texture screen, both running iPad OS 26, of course. And while no one in their right mind should trade up from last year's model, especially on an iPad, let's just see how much faster it is gen on gen. And kicking off in Geekbench 6, single core, 10% faster, multi-core, 21%, nice little optic, but nothing crazy. Jumping over to 3D Mark, which tests the graphics, I actually have to flip these over so you can see it, it's about 12% faster. However, in the Solar Bay Extreme test, which uses ray tracing, the new one is 65% faster. But let's do a quick video export test. Uh, I'm just exporting a, I think it's like a 12 minute 4K video of various iPhone 17 videos I shot. And the new M5 iPad exported it in a minute 33 versus a minute 44. So only about a 10% faster export there. But hang on to your hat, this is where things get interesting. Let's fire up the Geekbench AI benchmark and test it using the neural engine. And we're looking at a sort of six to 14% uptick, but then running the same test using the GPU, the graphics, we're looking at up to double the performance. And this is thanks to those neural accelerators on each GPU core. So for example, in the Draw Things app, which is a local AI image generation tool, in this test I've set up, the new M5 iPad Pro completes the generation in three minutes exactly, versus, keeps going, keeps going, six minutes 37. It's 55% faster, it's generated it in about half the time. So ray trace graphics and AI performance are significantly improved. Now, if you do fancy buying yourself a shiny new iPad Pro M5, then it'll cost you a thousand pounds for the 11 inch and 1300 quid for the 13 inch. And it comes in space gray or silver, but still 256 gigs of storage as standard. It is worth noting though, if you spec it up to a terabyte, not only do you get 16 gigs of RAM up from 12, although that is still an improvement on last year, uh, and also the option to pay the extra 100 for the nano texture screen if you fancy, but it also bumps the CPU from nine to 10 cores. Although I doubt that would make an awful lot of difference. Specced out with a Magic Keyboard, with an Apple Pencil, and 5G, it's about three grand. It's an awful lot of money, but you know what you're getting with an iPad Pro. This is undoubtedly the best tablet on the market if you want the iPad OS ecosystem. And while obviously the main criticism with iPads is that you have all this power, you've got the M5, but it is still constrained by the iPad OS. Yes, we have better multitasking and some nice improvements with the latest iPad OS 26 and some more desktop level apps, but it is still not Mac OS. And I think for most people, this still can't quite replace a full laptop. But hey, it's a little bit faster. It's just as nice in every other way. It's about the same price. And if you are buying an iPad Pro, then, well, you're probably buying on the business or you've got some reason to get this and not just an iPad Air, because I would actually wait if you could. I would put money on maybe in sort of March, April time, Apple refreshing some of the other iPads, including the Air, possibly with that 120Hz promotion. We saw it on the iPhone 17, which would make that a lot nicer to use. But what do you reckon? Tempted to upgrade or just too expensive? Let me know what you make of this in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Stay tuned for my full iPad buying guide coming very soon. I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.